You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Saturday was huge. Uh, what, what a time to be alive. Uh, I'm sure you've heard by now that LSU landed a commitment from uh, the number one quarterback and number one player in the country for the class of 2025, uh, Bryce Underwood out of Michigan. He made the announcement uh, signing or an announcement at his school there in Michigan where uh, he pulled out a hat uh, and an LSU jersey, a number 19 LSU Underwood jersey, and laid it there on uh, on the table. And with that, uh, skyrocketed LSU's class up to number two in the country now, coincidentally behind only Notre Dame. Uh, but the big difference is that uh, Notre Dame has far more prospects committed right now. Uh, LSU with their eight commitments, including three five stars, uh, the number one quarterback, number one receiver, number one running back in the country for 2025. When I say what a time to be alive, I, I want to lend some perspective because I, I can say this out loud and we all know it to be true, but sometimes when you add color and description, it just pops even more. And I've said it a lot this year, as have many others, but LSU was a quarterback graveyard, a wasteland for a decade. And only when Joe Burrow came here did it it turn things around in, in dramatic fashion now, where you've had two Heisman Trophy winners in a span of four years, and you just landed a commitment from the number one player in the country. But here's what I mean. After LSU signed Ryan Perilou in the class of 2005, who was a five-star and the number one quarterback in the country, Here's the list of quarterbacks that you signed out of high school since Perilou. You ready? Take a walk with me down memory lane. Jarrett Lee, Jordan Jefferson, Chris Garrett, Russell Shepard, Zach Lee, Stephen Rivers, Jeremy Liggins, Anthony Jennings, Hayden Reddick, Brandon Harris, Justin McMillan, Lindsey Scott, Lowell Narcisse, Miles Brennan, Peter Parrish, T.J. Finley, Max Johnson, Garrett Nussmeyer, Walker Howard, Ricky Collins, and now Colin Hurley. <laughs> Y'all. I'm trying to be nice because all them is young people and they try really hard, but there ain't a lot of good on that list. You know what I mean? Uh, you needed Zach Mettenberger. Danny Etling, uh, Joe Burrow, and Jaden Daniels for transfers to salvage any type of offensive culture. And then obviously the kaboom was with Joe Burrow, and now Jaden Daniels has won the program's uh, third Heisman Trophy, second in four years. Ain't a lot of good, but now you're talking about a program that has won two Heisman Trophies at the quarterback position, just led the country in total offense and had a, a transcendent-type season under Jaden Daniels. You've got Colin Hurley signed, who is a really impressive young prospect, and you just got a commitment from the number one player in the country, a consensus, composite number one player in the country who also happens to play the quarterback position only once in LSU's history. Only once in LSU's history have they ever signed the number one player in the country? That was Leonard Fournette 10 years ago, a running back from New Orleans. Fournette was a transcendent player who had an amazing LSU career and was a must-get because we all saw Leonard Fournette from the time he was in the eighth grade and he was right there at St. Aug and you had Frank Wilson on staff and you had to sign Leonard Fournette and you did. This kid's from Michigan. He ain't got nothing to do with LSU or Louisiana or the Bayou or anything. So how about an amazing hat tip, attaboy, congratulations to Brian Kelly and to Joe Sloan, primarily his recruiter, for getting this done. I mean, what an incredible yo moment for this program. And I know because I heard it this weekend. I heard it. I heard it. Yeah, Matt, well, he's still got a year before he signs. He could decommit. Sure, he could. 
Matt, even if he does sign, transfer portal will probably leave after a year. Might. Don't care. Enjoy this moment. Enjoy the fact that the number one player in the country, a quarterback from Michigan, is committed to your Fighting Tigers of LSU. Enjoy that. The cachet, what that means of having him in this class. Will it work out? Maybe. Maybe not. Don't know. That's not the point. The point is, the future of your quarterback position looks really, really good. In 24, you've got Nussmeyer, who's been waiting his turn. A.J. Swan, back up with experience. Ricky Collins is a redshirt freshman, and Colin Hurley coming in behind them. In 2025, Nuss could come back, could go pro. A.J. Swan could come back, could transfer. Ricky Collins could come back or transfer. Colin Hurley could be a redshirt freshman, and Bryce Underwood will be on campus. And then after that, who knows? Yes, the quarterback position more than any other is transient. It is fluid. Guys don't stay. They look for an opportunity to go somewhere. But the reality is, you can never, I'll say this again, big, bold, underline, underscore, you can never, never, ever, ever, never, ever have too much experience, too much talent at the most important position in organized team sports. If you have a chance to get the number one consensus, number one player in the country to your campus, you do it, you celebrate it, and you use that to build up an even better class. And I'll remind you this. There are two times prior where LSU had a movement what feels like this one is. 2001-2011, where you built incredible signing classes on guys who all decided they were going to do it together. 2001, that was the team that Nick Saban got his first full class at LSU, a bunch of dudes from Louisiana who were like, we're going to build a championship. We're doing it in our home state. Michael Clayton, Marcus Spears, Marquise Hill, that class in, two, in 2001. Andrew Whitworth, Rudy Nicewanger, that class, which was the cornerstone of the 03 championship. 2011, they call themselves the FAM. Odell, Jarvis, Lyle Collins, Freak Johnson, Kenny Hilliard, Trey Turner, that crew. And they all wanted to do it together. They stayed together to build a giant class. Look at what this class is right now. Harlem Berry, DeCorian Moore. Now you add Bryce Underwood. Of course, we know what Keelan Moses at Uhia said. He he's told Brian Kelly. He's going to be the ringleader of this class and build it. Go get the best players in the country. Sometimes those dudes commit together because they want to stay together and play together and try to win together. I'm not worried about what it's going to look like in, in two or three or four years from now. But in this moment, that's massive to have that guy in your class with 11 months to go before signing day. Not just because he's in your class, because what that means from a Pied Piper effect of bringing other great players here. Look, you will sort out the quarterback position in the future year by year. You will assess what happens in the portal, who stays, who goes, all that sort of stuff, year to year. And you have to do that year to year. Look, six months ago, nobody was thinking A.J. Swan was going to be an LSU Tiger. But the situation arose and necessitated it. So that's where you're at. And you'll do it again every spring and every fall and every summer and every winter based on what happens in that given year. But LSU just got a commitment from the consensus number one player in the country, a quarterback from Michigan. Yes, the same program that went a decade with having Jarrett Lee, Jordan Jefferson, Chris Garrett, Russell Shepard, Zach Lee, Stephen Rivers, Jeremy Liggins, Anthony Jennings, Hayden Reddick, Brandon Harris, Justin McMillan, Lindsey Scott, Lowell Narcisse, Miles Brennan, Peter Parrish, TJ Finley, Max Johnson, Garrett Nussmeyer, Walker Howard, Ricky Collins, Colin Hurley. You think I'm not going to sit there and do a backflip because Bryce Underwood's committed to LSU? you damn right I am. And I love everything this kid had to say as well. I love what his family has had to say as well. His dad gave an interview to 247, and he said, quote, I'm sorry, this was from Bryce Underwood. The program itself is very historical. A lot of great players went in and out of Louisiana State University. The food is amazing. A lot of real people there. A lot of people from Michigan. A lot of things we can relate to. Underwood's father in the same interview said Brian Kelly did an amazing job putting the staff together and everyone knows their role. Like we told them, it's not the buildings. Everyone has beautiful buildings. It's the people. How people approach you, how they take their time with you, 
their emotion, their demeanor. They're blatantly honest and give you the real on their expectations for their team and young men coming into the program. Bryce Underwood's mother in this interview, Beverly, talked about school being a priority and the two programs that her son is going to pursue, psychology and sports medicine. I mean, LSU did an incredible job recruiting Bryce, the entire family, and getting a transcendent-type player committed to this class. You can sit there and you can bemoan the, the culture in college football with transfer portal and guys leaving and whatever the case may be in NIL, but on this day, you better celebrate having that dude because it has literally happened once before in the history of the program where you got the number one player in the country, and that was a running back from St. Aug. This is a quarterback from Michigan. That's not to diminish Fournette at all. Greatest physical runner that LSU's ever had in this program. Bryce Underwood could, could be the best quarterback that LSU's ever had in this program. We'll see. Might sound like blasphemy now, but it's going to be a fun journey to see how it gets there. Bryce Underwood becomes the eighth commit for LSU's 2025 class. <laughs> what a time to be alive. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.